Welcome back to The Look, everyone. Today we have a special guest on. Her name is Kelly Healthman, fashion expert, but also the president of Magic Fashion Events. Kelly, welcome to The Look. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to talk to you today. Okay, so we're going to be talking about fashion trends today, um, but will you just give me just a little bio about what Magic Fashion Events is? Yeah, it's the largest fashion trade shows in the United States. So it's where all of the brands that you know and love and wear take booths and they show their collections to the buyers to buy for their stores, whether it's a mom and pop small boutique, an online store, or a buyer from a department store that you know of. So it really is that wholesale B2B side of the fashion industry. Amazing. Okay, so going into fashion trends, is there any trend that we should absolutely not be going towards this year? Or (laughs) do fashion trends always come back around and you're not wrong for wearing what you love? (laughs) You know what? I'm with I'm going with number two just because I'm a creative and love fashion. I feel like we should never get rid of those pieces we think are out because they do always come back around. I mean, look, it's happened the eighties, the nineties, all the nostalgia looks, the big logos, like, so save the things you love, wear what you love. It's a form of self-expression really. I love that. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into the first fashion trend that you have for us. What is it and how do we get this look? Okay, so deconstructed denim is a big one. Um, actually, for both men and women right now, it's had a it has a lot of grunge influence. So when you think of deconstructed denim, think patchwork, um, a play on fraying it or the way it's cut, different lines within your denim jackets. Actually, we're also wearing denim on denim again. So a lot of people call that the Canadian tux, but um, people are mixing and matching different colors, patchwork, fraying, um, and really deconstructing their denim based on that grunge influence. So I love that not only for your apparel, but also for accessories. We're seeing it um, on footwear as well as handbags and backpacks. Interesting. I I actually love the denim on denim look because everyone when I was a kid Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake wearing that out like that was the biggest thing around and now it's back and I think it looks so great it's such a play to the 90s but it's also so modern today I love that look (laughs) okay good I love it too and they actually played with a lot of different colors and phrase and cuts and patchwork also in that iconic photo so good see it always comes back around okay let's go to number two what's our second trend we're going for So ballet flats. Now this flats are back, whether you like them or not. Um, We're seeing obviously a ton of sneakers, but the ballet flat has made a comeback. It's been on all the runways. If you haven't already seen it in the stores, you're going to see it um, at all the main stores and from the brand. So I love it because it's a feminine play and it shows a little toe cleavage. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but if you can show a little toe cleavage, even better, but they're comfortable and great for fall. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. It sounds like a really good fall look as we're finally getting into colder weather. Finally. Uh, weather. Um, that sounds like a great option to put with a dress or a pant or anything like that. Yeah. I love it. And we've been seeing it on Haley Bieber lately. So it's been fun. Um, all different colors with a strap, without a strap, but just think ballet flats. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Number three trend. What is it? Metallics. So I know we've been seeing this for a while and it's really not going anywhere. So we saw it in our footwear. People were wearing metallic cowboy boots. Remember that was happening? That's dying down a little bit, but we are seeing metallic dresses, people buying metallic skirts. It could be a magenta metallic. It could be a blue. It could be your basic silver, but definitely metallics are still a thing and you can do it with how you feel comfortable. So maybe you're not the type that feels good to wear a metallic dress head to toe, but can you put it in an accessory in your footwear, in your handbag, maybe just a top? Um, so definitely you want to pay attention to metallics going all through fall and winter. And I feel like with metallics, you can kind of, you know, slowly get your way in there. Like you were saying with jewelry or a handbag, you can wear a super basic neutral fit and then tag a metallic bag or earrings or something with that to kind of put your foot into the water before you dive right into it. Yes, absolutely. You have to do what makes you comfortable. I always say, take these with a grain of salt. Just think about what works for you and your comfortability level, really. Absolutely. I love that. Okay. Next tip. What is it? Okay. This is a kind of simple one, but there has been a big trend called quiet luxury and quiet luxury is just really exactly what it is. 
It's very buttoned up, polished look, very simple. Not a lot of colors. Think more of creams, whites, khakis, denim, polished with a white sneaker, maybe a loafer. And part of that is the tailored white shirt and the tailored white shirt dress for women. So just think about simple, sleek, tailored, buttoned up. You could wear it with a sneaker, that shirt dress. You could wear it with a boot in the winter. It really is just so versatile. You can put a blazer, a navy blazer over it. Um, but you definitely want to have a white shirt, a, a tailored collared shirt with buttons, as well as the white shirt dress. They also have them in a ton of colors right now, but great for the fall. You can layer it also with a sweater over and have that collar pop out, which is a great detail. I love that because it sounds like you can be as dressed up as you want to be, but also if you want to go out for brunch or, you know, out for the girls night, you can kind of make it a little casual, but do a little something to dress it up. So I love, I love that. Yeah. I feel like depending on how fashion forward or trendy you are, you can really play it up and also make it that quiet, luxurious look that is trending right now. Awesome. Okay. I know you also told me before that you have some men's trends that are going on. What are those? I do. So I said the deconstructed denim, part of the grunge influence right now. Um, also part of that grunge influence for men's in the 90s is really the flannel. So we need to make sure to continue wearing that flannel. Also with the deconstructed denim is a whole vibe and look. But again, if it only... Um, it feels a little too much for you. You can take just the flannel still, maybe even with a t-shirt, tie that flannel around your waist if you want, or do some layering. Um, and you can put it with some different kind of denim with a hole in the knee, depending on, you know, if it's a casual day, lunch, maybe not to work, but grunge influences for men are really big. Um, flannels, denim, all the things, sneakers. I was going to ask you for that look, for the shoe for the men, what kind of, are you seeing sneakers with that look? Are you seeing boots since it's grunge? What, what are you seeing? Yeah, both that 90s almost flat boot that has a motorcycle influence mm -hmm. um, and they look distressed as well as distressed sneakers. So we see that brand Golden Goose right now blowing yes. up for men's and women's. They look like they're used, right? It's crazy. You're spending $700 on a sneaker that looks like it's been worn, but it is in style. And so for men too, having a sneaker that is, you know, deconstructed distressed is actually the thing right now, but I love the flat motorcycle type boot. Again, just making sure everybody knows the styling tip, not over the denim, under the denim. <laughs> love that. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for being on here and sharing all of the trends. Okay. Um, where can they go for more information about your business? Yeah, of course. Um, so you can always hit me up on Instagram. I'm just at Kelly Helfman, K-E-L-L-Y-H-E-L-F-M-A-N. Um, my website's kellyhelfman.com and I'm always here to help and give you all the fashion tips you need. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Megan Acker, a trailblazer in the world of safety and innovation. Joining us is the visionary behind Meg All Good, a company dedicated to merging functionality with fashion in the realm of safety. Megan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk about this. Okay. So first, Meg All Good is the name of the company. Tell me what is Meg All Good? Yes. So Meg All Good is the company that I started. This idea honestly was something that I thought about for over a year and a half and finally have it launched. But the company itself is really founded off of a hole in the market that I saw when I went through a personal experience with purchasing my first safety tool. Um, but the actual name Meg All Good is a code word that my dad had with me. And really, he raised me on being aware, being prepared, and really safety top of mind. And that's what I want this brand to embody for everyone to have that same sense of comfort, that same sense of safety, um, and know that when they're wearing their Meg All Good bag, that they have all those different qualities. Absolutely. Yeah. Safety is such a big topic right now, especially for women of all ages. Um, but we're not just going to categorize this as a women only tool because you're opening it up to men, children, anybody who needs a place to hold their safety equipment at, um, which goes into my next question, which is why did you create Meg All Good? You kind of just touched on it, but explain more in depth, like why, you know, why bring this product to life? 
Yeah, definitely. So like I had said, this company and brand and the product idea really was born from a hole in the market. So when I bought my first taser, which is a safety tool that I specifically have in my bag, um, I thought about the reality of carrying it on me. And it's not the smallest thing. It's not the biggest thing, but it is bulky to hold in my hand. So realistically, I was like, if I'm actually going to be serious about carrying a safety tool on me, I need a fashionable yet functional way to wear it. So I started searching for bags um, and nothing was on the market. And I was like, I cannot be the only person who is struggling to find a way to carry a safety tool like this. So that's when I got to work on the design of the bag. And I wanted it to be something that I would wear every day. So at the time I was wearing a fanny pack as a chest bag, which is a super trendy way to wear those bags right now. And I thought this is a perfect way because it's functional, but it's fashionable. It's cute. It's easy. Um, and that is ultimately why I created this bag. You talk about the functionality of this bag. What are all the functions of the bag? What can, how can we use this? Yeah, definitely. So I actually have it right here. I can show you a little yeah. bit of it. Um, so again, it looks like a normal crossbody bag. So when it's on your chest, you can't, that's also kind of the beauty of it is you don't necessarily, someone can't see that you're holding something in here. So whether you put a taser or a stun gun, pepper spray, bear spray, a flashlight, really anything that is this shape can fit into this quick release pocket right here. Um, so I wanted it to be universal where you could pick what you want in there. Again, the bag doesn't come with any safety tools. It's for you to stock with what you're comfortable with, what you're trained on, what you feel confident in. Um, so as far as the safety compartment being what's special about it, it is the same as any other bag where you can also put your keys, your lip gloss, whatever you want in the main compartment, as well as a wallet compartment. Um, and then a phone pocket in the back and a key ring hook right here. So then you could also attach other tools to it. So a pepper spray or a cubiton or a personal alarm. I really wanted it to be something that you can have fun with and customize and what's going to make you feel the best wearing it and what's comfortable for you and what you don't feel awkward carrying around. But I really, really wanted everything to be separate because I think that's the number one thing that holds people up from being able to pull out a safety tool is if it's buried in the bottom of your bag and you have to dig through it, it's already too late. You've lost your chance to defend yourself. Um, so I wanted everything to have a spot so that everything's organized and you can feel prepared. That's awesome. I think it's a big thing to note that yes, it is for functionality and, you know, fashionable, but it's also quick access to your safety tool when you are in need of like, let's say you're carrying a taser. It's a very quick access to it. That way you can stay as safe as possible um, in that circumstance. So yes, it's trendy, it's fashionable, it's great looking, but the number one thing that everyone should take away is that when you're in that moment of need, you're going to be able to hurry up, grab it out and use your safety tool as needed. Yes, definitely. And I think just adding on to that, being able to pull it out without even looking down because it's very user-friendly. All you need to do is pull open the drawstring and pull out whatever the safety tool is. So we're not even wasting time of looking down and having to be into your bag because that's also a risk right there. If you looking away, God forbid someone is coming at you or you're being attacked. Um, so really had to think through all those different things to make it very user-friendly, easy to access, but also easy to store and hold on you. Something you just said there, and I want you to tell me, I didn't have this on my list of questions, but what is the proper way to carry, like, let's say we're going on a walk, the big headphones that go over your ears is super trendy and in right now, uh, people looking at their phones while they're on a walk. What is the proper way to go on a walk? Yes, I am no expert, but I do a lot of research in self-defense. I've taken self-defense courses um, and some of like the really, really big things are one, just being aware. And it sounds silly. And you might think when you have your headphones on that you're aware, but you're taking away one of like the main things that could tell you someone is coming at you, or you might not hear footsteps coming up behind you. So yeah, having headphones on, having loud music really of any kind in your ear um, can be, you know, set you off and also shows someone that you are not paying attention. So you automatically could make yourself a target if they see that you're distracted. So being distracted and not having awareness is some of those big things, having your head down in your phone, again, just being distracted. Um, one of the big things is having confidence and people might not believe that, but that's what I say this bag gives you because when I'm walking through just a parking lot or whatever, where normally I might feel a little bit vulnerable, I know I have my bag on me, my head is up, I'm making eye contact with people, they know that I feel confident and that makes me less of a target. 
Um, so those are kind of some of just the, the basic things to know, but I truly feel that when I have the bag on, that's what it embodies. And that's what I hope other people can feel as well. I love that. Uh, Megan, where can we find and purchase if we want to the Meg All Good bag? Yes. So the website is megallgood.com. You'll be able to see everything that's offered on there. You can read more in depth about the story of how I created the name and the backstory. Um, And then also all of our social handles, our Instagram is at meg.all.good. Same with TikTok. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan, for being on today. Thank you so much. Hello, and welcome to The Look. I'm Dr. Andrew Bernstein, also known as Dr. Fashion. And I'm here with Faith Ferrist, obviously the fairest of them all. Fabric has changed the course for young entrepreneurs and designers. They give them the hope and inspiration to become the future designers and entrepreneurs of today. They work with them, they nurture them, and they bring them to the forefront of fashion not only in the Southwest, but all around the world. Fabric has been doing what so many companies and even universities and colleges can't. They are the mentors. They are the leaders. They are the providers of great experiences in business, fashion, entrepreneurship, and everything in the fashion retail area. So today I'm honored to have Angela Johnson, the co-founder of Fabric with us today. And I'm gonna do a deep dive with Angela, not only her background, her education, but why Fabric? How did it come about? Oh my goodness, what an incredible introduction. I feel so honored, thank you so much. Wow. Well, well we're, we're honored to have you. <laughs> so let's get into the deep dive and, um, and let us know, um, a little bit about what you've done. Oh, well, I'm excited to share all about it. So um, this is really a passion of mine to help what we call apparel entrepreneurs. And those are people with a good idea for a sewn product that really just need help starting and launching and creating that sewn product. It's really hard to find resources um, to manufacture or design, develop your idea in the US, um, especially if you haven't actually been in this industry before. So just even knowing where to go and what to ask for is an obstacle. So fabric is here really for that reason. And the fabric word is an acronym for the Fashion and Business Resource Innovation Center. We're actually a nonprofit fashion incubator. And it's more than just an incubator. I mean, I would consider us uh, a co-working space, an academy, uh, a manufacturer. I mean, so many different things. But the idea is that you could walk in with an idea, never had any experience, and be able to get through product development, manufacturing, business startup, branding, marketing, sales, everything under one roof. And um, we have helped over a thousand apparel entrepreneurs since 2016. And we also, as a nonprofit, try to provide a lot of free resources and discounted resources to make it more affordable because starting a fashion brand is really expensive. So anything we can do to help, um, we actually provide scholarships into the educational part, into the handholding part or the consulting, whatever you want to call it. We call it a roadmap. And that is part of our give back to the community. And we've calculated over $10 million worth of free and discounted programs and services that we've given to help make it more affordable for apparel entrepreneurs. And then as a nonprofit, we have a bigger vision. Our mission is to help these apparel entrepreneurs by providing them the resources and everything that they need to start brands in the U.S. And um, our bigger vision is to kind of, I mean, it sounds pretty, pretty vast, but we want to reinvent the industry. We want to do it right. We want to use technology to make it better. Right now, the fashion industry is in a spotlight for being the most, it's the second most polluting industry on the planet, right next to the oil industry. It's almost equal with the oil industry. And it's because we all wear clothes, right? So you've got all these billions of people on the planet who just go through their clothing like it's disposable. And so we all think clothing should should be affordable. We're like, oh, that's too expensive. And it should cost less than my lunch. And all of that mentality has made it so that you know, brands have to overproduce in giant quantities in unsafe, unfair 
um, you know, labor practices overseas in sweatshops to achieve such cheap prices. And they end up with all this excess inventory, which gets burned or put in the landfills. So we want to reinvent that. We think that domestic small batch manufacturing, on-demand manufacturing, customization, uh, being able to do a lot of product, digital product creation so that you don't have to sew up so many samples and you can just fill orders when they come in is the solution. So our bigger vision is working towards that solution for the U.S. I think that's just incredible. And, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you about before you get into more of your deep dive, but I know years ago when I did visit with you, you were doing almost dresses of tapestry. I think you had flags or patterns that use from Arizona State or whatever. I know we have an upcoming designer who's doing clothes made out of uh, balloons and things like that, So, which is really crazy and wonderful. But can you tell us a little bit more about that? I remember when those came out sort of on the fabric runway um, <clears throat> over at your um, studio, how incredible. They, they, I think you had done a fashion show the night before. And but Tell us, and that's sustainability, that's repurposing, rebranding, which everybody wants to do today. You've been doing it now for years. And you have, I know you have customers who are buying it one of a kind and they just come and they love that. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Because it really ties into everything you're doing, sustainability, fabric, fiber, and everything. Yeah. So you're talking about my own collection, which is um, basically ball gowns and blazers made out of recycled t-shirts. Yes. Um, that is something that I've been doing for, I guess, 20, 22 years now. And it was a result of the fact that when I moved from Los Angeles to Arizona, so I, I'm from Arizona and I had gone to Los Angeles to go to fashion school. I ended up working in the industry in Los Angeles for um, a few other brands and getting my feet wet there and 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 learning a lot about production management and starting a brand out there um, and manufacturing and, and, and kind of learning all the secrets to small batch manufacturing in Los Angeles and, um, and how to get around those minimums and stuff. And then I moved back to Arizona and there were no manufacturing resources in Arizona. So I had to shut my brand down because of the lack of manufacturing resources. And that's when I thought, what can I do? I can I can make one of a kinds. And so instead of manufacturing, how do I make these one of a kind special so that people are willing to spend more on them because I'm going to put so much work into sewing each one myself. That's a very different, you know, financial model than reproducing something in a manufacturing setting. So to make it special, I thought I'll just upcycle some some materials and items from thrift stores. And I ended up landing on t-shirts because of all the graphics. And so um, it was my bread and butter for probably 15 years before I opened up fabric. So that collection um, is long ball gowns, knee length party dresses, mini dresses and blazers. And so it's those four silhouettes and clients can go and pick their silhouette, pick their size, and then request a certain theme for t-shirts. So it could be, you know, like animals or locations or um, sports or music or whatever, or they could provide their own t-shirts that they've collected and never wear anymore. And um, then I turn it into one of those items for them. And that's kind of what I did. And at the same time, I was teaching fashion at like every fashion school in Arizona and realizing this lack of manufacturing is an issue. Um, all these students were graduating from these fashion schools and had no place to work. And I was meeting all kinds of designers by putting my stuff on runways and all these designers needed resources. And that was really what inspired me to create fabric in 2016 so that we could provide the manufacturing resources to the people who needed it. And so that journey, that whole, you know, starting out in Los Angeles and ending up in Arizona and creating those upcycled t-shirt ball gowns was the reason that fabric actually exists today. <laughs> and Dacrimen, fabric, what is it again? The Fashion and Business Resource Innovation Center. We love it. And we have to thank Angela. This was so inspiring, what you and your partner are doing and the whole fabric team. I know I've been out there. I have to come back. The look is coming back. Faith and I, and we're going to cover it and see you. Maybe a different backdrop and different hairdo, but it's the same look and it's the same Angela and the same crowd. We really want to thank you. What you're doing for fashion and retail, and even beauty, is incredible. So on behalf of The Look and all of us here on The Look TV, 
Thank you so much, Angela. It's been a uh, pleasure. And for those who want more information, we have that on our screen for you to get in touch with Angela and Fabric. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.